right, my name is Kristen Bernstein. We're going to talk about electrical surgical units today, sources of them, risks associated for both you guys and your patients, and then protections from them. So we're presenting to our group of perioperative fellows today. So our learning objectives for today are to identify the types of electrical surgical units and the sources of surgical smoke, recognize risks associated with ESU use, and discuss appropriate methods of protection from the risks of ESU use and the surgical smoke. So to do this, we are going to make a concept map. So we will start with ESU and surgical smoke in the center. Can you guys tell me some sources of some methods of ESU and sources of surgical smoke? The bovi. So the bovi can be monopolar or bipolar, right? Any others? The argon beam. Argon beam, perfect. That's our ABC, argon beam coagulator. Anything else come to mind? got laser. It's not electrosurgery, but it'll produce surgical smoke. The ligature, Enseal, all those name brands will all create that, and they all have risks associated with them as well. All right, so others, we're going to talk about the risks associated with each of these. So what are some things that come to mind for that? Fire. Fire, that's a big one. All right, so fire get into more of that later. Anything else? Burns. Burns. All right. So that's one we'll elaborate on now. So how can burns happen related to these? The grounding pad. Mm -hmm. The grounding pad. And that's when you've got one instrument that is insulated well. Passive coupling. But the electric the electricity can still jump to another metal instrument that's in the region, such as a trocar or a suction irrigator or something like that. The direct coupling. Direct coupling. So that's if you don't have any insulated instrument. Bad idea. All right. Another... That pretty much covers burns. Another risk for ESU. Paint paint is right in the center. Sure. Smoke. 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 Yep. Okay. So surgical smoke. So that presents risks to our patients. You guys know what that would entail? Irritation. Well, that's more so for us. So. The surgical smoke. So the surgical smoke for the patient is usually a risk when we're doing laparoscopic cases. So all the smoke is being created inside the abdomen. So that can be absorbed into the bloodstream, into the bladder, and you'll actually see a rise in some of these chemicals in the urine over the next few days. And so we know that it's being absorbed into the patient. And these are carcinogens, teratogens, things like that that can cause issues down the road. So we don't want to inhale it, of course. So we can turn the wax on. So for staff, you already said respiratory issues. So they found that for OR nurses, they have a higher incidence of bronchitis, of asthma, of issues like that. Um, have you guys heard of anything else happening or any notice anything while you're in the OR in this offseason? It smells <laughs> terrible. It smells terrible. <laughs> it smells terrible. It smells like something you shouldn't uh -huh. be breathing. Um, so eye irritation and throat irritation, people have reported those. People have reported um, dizziness, weakness, 
Exactly. So, uh -huh. so the, the um, smoke has been shown to transmit viruses as well. So that's obviously a good thing. All right. So all these terrible things, what are we going to do about them? So protection from burns, fires, surgical smoke, all that good stuff. So we'll talk about protection from burns. So what do you need to avoid when placing the grounding pad? Airy, yep. So no metal, no bony, no airy. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to try and find um, a good size muscle mass to put, to put our grounding pad on. What other ways can you avoid burns? You always want to check your... Um, Check your instruments before use, using your scrub. <clears throat> Be responsible for, or, you know, who's ever scrubbed in. Um, make sure that there aren't any tears in the insulation or anything like that. Uh, let's see. Anything else to avoid burns? Not just to the patient, but to you, to you guys, to the surgeon, to the scrub. Double gloving. Double gloving. Maybe, maybe. You probably will go through both if you manage <laughs> to come in contact with it. How about the holster? Yeah. Yeah. So making sure you keep the ESU holstered in somewhere safe that it can't burn through. Um, what else do we have? So our scratch pad. So when you're not using the scratch pad enough or making sure you're cleaning off that eschar off the tip of the bogey, you just keep having to turn the power up. And you're just going to do too much to burn, so it's not going to transmit well through that S bar and control where it's going and things like that. So just making sure you're using your scratch pad and keeping that tip clean. All right, fires. Are we going to prevent fires? Um, good communication and creation. Absolutely. That's a good one. Music. Yep, Holster comes in play with that one as well. Your alarm right there. How about your prep? Yep, making sure that if you do use an al a prep with alcohol in it, that it has plenty of time to dry and doesn't build up underneath your crate. All right, and then how are we going to protect ourselves from that surgical smoke? The dreaded. So your primary always has to be those smoke evacuators. You can use there's a couple different options. You've got inline filters. So the regular local exhaust. And then you want to make sure you've got a high filtration mask, like as we said. And that it is got it has a nice seal around your face and your instruments. All right, so that just about covers ESU and surgical smoke risks and our beautiful, somewhat messy content map. Any questions? <laughs>